Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Esfa and I am a didactic content creator, which means that I like sharing tips and teaching things I have learned over my years playing Tibia. And in today's video we are going to analyze the hand of a person that requested help with his hand. If you didn't know, if you are any gay, you can record your hand, upload it to YouTube and send me the link and I will analyze it on stream. This is a type of content that I really enjoy doing and I think it is a super cool thing and it can help a lot of people too, so yeah, this is really nice. It is completely free by the way. After the absolute success of the first video, I adapted the format to some of your suggestions, so please make sure to suggest changes and give me feedbacks and criticism so I can improve the format of these videos. Since we have already talked about the majority of the mistakes our friend is doing in another video, I'll mention them briefly just to remind you the importance of them. I highly suggest watching the previous coaching videos so you can get a deeper understanding of the mistakes. In today's video we are going to take a look at a 625 EK in Nagas. He has really good skills, 131 with loyalty and has an OK set. He's going to go with a very defensive set, which won't give him the best XP hour, but will allow him to hunt hardcore. And the charms he's using are dodge on Naga Archers, low blow on Naga Warriors, and zap on Makaras. Anyways, let's start the video by highlighting the main points of improvement. Number one is to use more often the spells when guiding. Especially in this situation, our friend has really good skills, which amplifies the damage difference he will do with spells versus runes. But also, the charms our friend is using don't work that well with runes. He's using low blow on warriors, which, yes, if the charm procs on a rune, it will deal critical damage, but the base damage of a rune is super low compared to a spell. He also has dodge on naga archers, so no possible proc here and zap on Makaras, which benefits both spells and runes. What I'm trying to say here is that in this particular scenario, even if our friend hits three targets with an Exori, he will more likely deal more damage than using a Thunderstorm on five targets. The next point of improvement is sorting your battle list properly if you use attack next target. I recommend using Ascending Distance, this way you are going to start cycling from the closer mob. I strongly recommend getting used to right click melee mobs to change target, but if you want to use Attack Next Target, make sure to set it up properly. The problem about using Attack Next Target when kiting is that the moment you target one mob, the next mob will be relative to the current target and will not be the first on your battle list, right? I don't know if that makes sense. This can be solved by pressing Escape key to deselect your current target and reset the battle list per se. Of course, if you are a naughty boy, you can use an illegal macro and make it press Escape key before you press the, the attack next target key. Of course, I don't recommend using this because it's bannable, but yeah, it is an option nonetheless. Point three would be to try to minimize the auto attacks you miss while kiting. This would impact your HP and mana balance as well as your XP hour. This is one of these things that doesn't seem important at all, but are really, really big in the long run. All right, point four is a new one. On Exeta and press response, we as EKs have to think what to do beforehand. Why is that? Well, Ampress is a support spell as well as Sutito Tempo is, so they both share cooldown. Meaning that a badly timed Ampress, while handy to deal damage, can also result in a poor damage input because you are going to use spells um, without having Utito on. Our friend here did the worst thing you can do, uh, which is waiting for your Rutito and then starting the rotation. You don't want to do this. What you want to do instead is either use Utito beforehand, so when the mobs get to you, you still have Utito on. This is, in my opinion, the best option, but of course takes practice and knowledge about the respawn. Or you can start with a lesser spell. Generally speaking, we always want to start with Exotic Gram. But if you don't have Utito Tempo up, don't waste your precious damage spell and use an Exori or Exori Mass instead. 
Bear in mind that if you decide to start your rotation with Exorimas, you might need to adjust your whole rotation, which sucks a little, but sometimes it is necessary. This will be the case if you are not running double Exorimas perk. If you start with Exorimas, you will need to add an Exori after each Exorimas or Exorigran, so it would be like Exorimas, Exori, Exorigran, Exori, Exorimas, etc. Although the Lion a bit your Exorigran, this rotation will eliminate your Exorimin completely, which is what you want to do in 95% of the situations. As I said in previous videos, just take my advice as what it is, an advice and not a rule. So if you don't want to adjust your rotation, go with it, go do your normal rotation, there's no problem in that. Point 5 of improvement would be to be really careful about how many cooldowns you spend after the bulk of the pool dies. In this example, you can see that our friend stays almost the duration of an entire box just for 3 mobs. Do this enough times and you will make way less XP than you should. Alright, so these were the points that he as an individual has to improve. I wanted to add to the format how I recommend hunting this respawn. I'll go over the route, pull by pull, and tell you all that I know and why I do the pulls the way I do. Starting from pull number one, you want to pull the mobs from southwest to the entrance. It is really important to try and not waste a lot of time kiting them. Since the distance from the luring point to the boxing point is big, you can get caught wasting a lot of time in the process. In this pool, it is okay to prioritize thunders if it helps you make it faster. It is important that while luring, before you go to the entrance, you step a little bit to the right so you get an extra mob, and when getting to the entrance, you also go to the right and grab an extra mob or two. I normally step at these uh, two spots, uh, depending on how far away my lure is. For the pool number two, we are going to guide the mobs from the right all over here. It is important to do two things. Number one is going a little south, just so the monster script notice your presence and start pathing towards you. And number two, you want to stop at this exact spot. I have found that this is a sweet spot for this pool. By stopping here, you are more likely to attract the attention of any mobs that is north of you, and normally you are going to attract a mob west of you, adding two extra mobs to your pool. This is the hardest pool in the respawn, so be really careful, and try to kite them as much as possible so when you box yourself, the mobs are yellow HP. Pool number 3 has something special. We are going to kite the usually two mobs from the right to the room. You can do the pull outside of the room, but generally you are going to have trouble making a full box. And sometimes you are even going to miss a couple of mobs from the room. Once inside of the room, you want to stop at this wide range. This is important to avoid causing a bottleneck. If you were to do the box here, you will be creating a bottleneck that will make the mobs lose focus each time that a mob is blocking the way. By doing the pull here, you reduce the bottleneck. It will still happen sometimes, but they have a lot more room to path towards you. Pool number 4 doesn't have anything special, you are just going to kite all the mobs you encounter on your way to the pool. You have two ways of doing this pool, on the hallway or inside the room. I personally don't like it to do it inside, because you have to make 4 or 5 mobs pass through a really narrow passage instead of uh, just making two or three pass. The downside of doing this pool in the hallway is that sometimes doing a full box is hard and maybe you miss a mob from the room. For the pool number five, we are going to go downstairs and path towards the south. It is really important to make sure to almost enter the big room. This is done to attract the mobs to your box. Then you want to return to your boxing point, which I recommend to do it here. This is another difficult pull, especially because it is really hard to kite without losing a lot of time in the process, so be really careful. Pull number 6 is just north of this one, you are going to kite the two mobs in the hallway to the room. I personally stop here, but our friend's spot isn't bad either. I have tried his spot and I personally prefer the other spot, just because yes, you get one mob less, but the pull is way easier 
than having to wait for all the pull to reach the, the boxing point, right? But this is completely up to you. For pool number 7, we are going upstairs and lure whatever is close to the entrance of the room to the room. Really standard pool. Pool number 8 is hard to do, at least I usually get trapped. <laughs> I need to practice more until I get it perfect. What you actually want to do is picking in the south room, then picking in the north one and go back to the middle. This way you are going to force mobs to path towards you and most likely kill more creatures than just standing in the middle. And we are back to pool number 1. Alright, I wanted to finish the video by showing you a side by side comparison applying the techniques and route I showed you in the video so you can see the difference between our friend and my gameplay. I had the chance to play an almost identical character, it had only 15 more levels. Also, I went with a more offensive set. Anyways, I'll leave you guys with the gameplay, I hope you guys learned something today and if you have any suggestion on how to improve this series, please make sure to write them down in the comment section. These videos take quite a while to do, so I would really appreciate it if you liked the video, comment for the algorithm and share it with anybody that may have need of it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and as always, sit up straight, drink water and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!